Good evening, Madam Chair Cook, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. I want to thank you for your time this evening, and I am honored to be here to present as a part of the Equity and Engagement Series on behalf of the Department of Special Education on the topic of equitable literacy practices for students with disabilities. I find it fitting to begin with this quote because I believe it quite eloquently captures what we all know to be true about the importance of being literate. And it reads, no skill is more crucial to the future of a child or to a democratic and prosperous society than literacy. To be sure, the ability to actively and fully participate in civic life depends on an individual's ability to read. Here in WJCC, we remain steadfast in our mission to equip our students with the skills necessary to become lifelong learners and independent citizens. National statistics consistently affirm our need to focus on literacy. And for no population is this more critical than for students with disabilities. Alarmingly, 28% of students with learning disabilities are five or more grade levels behind in reading by the time they reach high school. Within WJCC, our own data tells us that there is a significant gap between the reading achievement of students with disabilities and their non-disabled peers. And although we continue to exceed the state average for our special education students in this area, we are by no means under any illusion that this is acceptable. And while we fully acknowledge our current reality, we also remain vigilant in our commitment to close these achievement gaps. We're really excited about the potential of the literacy practices I will be highlighting this evening to help us do just that. The WJCC literacy model provides a variety of research-based interventions that are used in our schools. Fortunately, for the majority of students with disabilities, these interventions are well suited to address their literacy needs. And the data shows us that they are making gains in the area of reading with these instructional approaches. Unfortunately, however, there are students with disabilities who have not yet responded to those interventions, and they require a deeper, more intensive instructional approach to achieve growth. The three programs I will be highlighting shortly are called Tier 3 Interventions, and they are uniquely designed to be used with students with the most significant challenges in the area of reading. These programs I'm highlighting this evening have been chosen because of their high impact on results, they are age appropriate, and proven to be effective based on scientific research for students with high intensity reading needs. To go back one, sorry. Bear with me just a moment. I think I got one of my slides out of order. The three programs this, that will be highlighted this evening are the Wilson Reading System, Voyager Passport, and Language Live. The Wilson Reading System is a highly structured, intensive program that provides a multi-sensory approach to students who've been unable to learn with other reading strategies. It is a systematic, sequential, and expl an explicit approach to teach reading. The hallmark of the program is its appropriateness for students who have a documented and significant decoding deficit. So, meaning in, by decoding, these students may lack the ability to pull a word apart, sound out the letters or letter blends in the word, and then encode, put that word back together and read it. Special education teachers and school-based IEP, IEP teams must first identify the student's specific area of deficit in order to determine if Wilson is an appropriate instructional fit. It's important to note that although Wilson is not the only intervention to use to address decoding issues, it is certainly one of the most widely recognized. The Wilson program addresses the pillars of literacy, beginning at the most basic level with letters and sounds, and moves along to address comprehension, which is the ultimate goal of reading. Although Wilson reading is not necessarily a new intervention in WJCC, 
the implementation of it across the division was an area that needed to be addressed. There were approximately four to five special education teachers who held the certification to teach the program, but oftentimes there was a mismatch between the students who needed the program being at the school where the teacher was staffed to provide it. In order to eliminate the barriers to access for our students, we made it a priority to increase our instructional capacity. During the 15-16 school year, 11 special education teachers participated in the intensive year-long training required to become a level one certified Wilson instructor, instructor. The training was in addition to their assuming, to assuming their roles as full-time special education teachers and it required very intensive coursework, multiple on-site visits and observations, direct and explicit practice of the methodology with one student, and regular meetings with the Wilson instructor throughout the whole year. However, as a result, all of our elementary and middle schools are staffed with at least one Wilson instructor who is qualified to provide these services. Currently, there are 111 students, which is 6.8% of our special education population, participating in Wilson instruction. There are 102 of these students are at the elementary level in grades two through five, and nine of these students are middle schoolers in grades seven and eight. What you see before you is some of the outcome data for Wilson from the 2015-16 school year. Since the current year's final data, its data is not yet available, but will be so as of July 2017. Overall progress in the Wilson reading system is determined by student performance on an assessment called the WADE, which stands for Wilson Assessment of Decoding and Encoding. The WADE is administered to students twice a year, once at the beginning of the program and then again at the end of the year. As you can see, 23 students mastered the program's curriculum, as evidenced by scoring 80% or higher on the Wilson Assessment of Decoding and Encoding, the WADE. These students can appropriately apply strategies in order to decode, encode, and comprehend written text. That's certainly not to suggest that they no longer have reading challenges. However, they have made gains in cracking the code and being able to read. 73 students made sufficient progress with the program, which is measured by a student moving through the various books and subsequent steps of the Wilson program, which I'll explain a little further now. In the chart you see in front of you, this illustrates one of the clearest ways a student can demonstrate progress in the Wilson Reading Program. It shows their movement through the Wilson books. There are 12 books in the entire program, and each program has various steps. For example, book one has six steps, book nine has seven steps, and in total, there are 62 steps in the entire program. Because the program is sequential, it builds and a student moving through the steps in each of the books is a strong indication that they've mastered the content prescribed in the previous level. Again, as you can see from the chart, the blue bars show the number of steps students in the program have moved during the 15-16 school year. Similarly, the green bars show steps moved as of March 2017. We fully anticipate the green bars to rise since students still have seven and a half, seven and a half more weeks of instruction and we anticipate that movement through the levels will continue. Now keep in mind that there are different entry points for every child who enters the program. Students may enter at book five based on the results of the WADE. Others may enter at book one, which is the very beginning of the program. And this is why the instruction is predominantly provided in a one-to-one -one setting. In instances where students may be in the same book, Teachers can provide the instruction in a small group setting, which is ideally three to five students. The results of the initial testing really informs the starting point. So it's very individualized. It's not a one size fits all. You don't start from step one and go through the steps. You start where you are. Students may also start at different times during the school year. This is dependent on when the approach is determined to be an instructional need for them. Now you will hear from one of our phenomenal special education teachers, Mrs. Amelie Smucker, who is a teacher at Rawls Bird, who's the highlight this evening. Um, and Ms. Smucker was one of the 11 teachers who went through the Wilson certification training and is currently provided, providing Wilson instruction in her school. 
Wilson has had a huge impact on the reading instruction we're doing throughout the school. Um, this is really targeting kids that are getting special ed services in reading in lots of different areas, whether it's been reading recovery in the past or Voyager Passport. Um, so they're getting it in their gen ed class, they're getting it with their special ed teacher, and then this is specially targeted just for those kids who really struggle with those fundamental um, decoding and encoding skills. Okay, ready? Sock. 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 Yeah, build it for me. They love this. It's okay to make a mistake here in Wilson class, and they know that. Um, and so that safety, I think, in that area where they know they belonged as readers has been really powerful <coughs> for them. Overall, they've all said, oh, I'm, I'm not a good reader. This is, I'm, you know, I've got a lot of reading teachers. I'm not a good reader. And all of a sudden, one day, like months into it, a kid came up to me, confident as can be, and went, I love reading. Miss Smucker, I'm a reader now. And that, for me, was just like, end of the deal. It sealed the deal for me. Like, I'm hooked on Wilson. The kids are hooked on it. I think that emotional connection for them and that they want to read at home. They want to read in class. They want to get picked on and selected as the student who can read that passage is an amazing thing. And so for me, data aside, it's the kids' confidence that's really driving it home for me. The next program I want to speak about is a program called Voyager Passport. It is another intensive intervention that we are using with our students with disabilities. Instruction in this program is provided via a blended approach, meaning there's an online component that allows the student to receive individualized instruction based on their unique areas of need. And then there's a teacher-led aspect that explicitly teaches cueing strategies for decoding, peer and teacher modeling to practice fluency, and questioning strategies to enhance comprehension. The program also provides differentiation for diverse student populations, including English language learners. And we're finding that many of our students with disabilities are concomitantly impacted and fit into other subgroups such as ELL. It also includes progress monitoring, reteaching procedures, correction support, and online reading practice for the students. There's a data management portion so teachers have access at their fingertips to data, which allows them to respond immediately and provide corrective reinforcement. We piloted Voyager Passport with one school and one classroom during the 15-16 school year. This current school year, this program is being used in three elementary schools with 48 students. Discussions are currently also underway to expand the program into additional elementary schools during the 17-18 school year. We're pleased with the progress our students have shown within the program at this juncture. This chart before you shows preliminary data as of March 2017. As you can see from the chart, all 48 students in the program across the three elementary schools have demonstrated growth. Now growth in Voyager Passport is measured by movement on the DRA2, which is a reading assessment tool used internally in WJCC. The data before you is our efforts to compartmentalize so that you can clearly see the student growth. So, some growth means students have grown at least one DRE2 level. Moderate means they've grown two to four levels. And significant growth means they've grown five or more levels, as measured by the DRE2. It's important to remember again that the students in this program are working significantly below grade level, significantly below their chronological or assigned grade level, that is. Likewise, given the highly personalized nature of the program, these students also have different entry points. They have different areas of deficit. So their progress is determined by how far they have moved from the baseline starting point. This program is utilized, the utilization rather, of the program is based off of several factors, which include, but certainly is not limited to, the services for reading that are outlined in a student's IEP, any other interventions for reading that are currently being used with the student, the student schedule, just to name a few. As I mentioned earlier, there was a pilot of this program with one class. Next, you're going to hear from Mrs. Fauna Wilcox, special education teacher at DJ Montague, who was the pilot for the program and is currently using Voyager Passport in her classroom.
Passport has given me a guided curriculum designed to meet the needs of my students that were and are struggling. The lessons are designed to teach components of comprehension, phonics, vocabulary, and fluency. Addressing these daily in a guided direct instruction model has really helped my students become better readers. All of my students that are using the program have showed academic progress. I have had a few students who, gave, who have already gained over a year's worth of growth since September, and other students are on track to show at least a year's worth of growth in the next month or two. I have a second grade student who is reading at a DRA 6 in September. That's the beginning of first grade. At the beginning of March, she was reading at a DRA 24, which is on grade level right now, middle of second grade. Now all he wants to do is read. His mom says everywhere they go, He's reading everything and anything he can get his hands on. The final program that I'd like to highlight is called Language Live. I know that I'm preaching to the choir when I tell you that once a student falls behind, they're really unlikely to catch up or make progress unless there is an intensive, appropriate instruction provided to them. So while the curriculum moves on, the students do not. Language Live provides a systematic, explicit approach on an individualized basis for our adolescent students who are well below grade level in reading. This program is authored by Dr. Louisa Motes, who is a world-renowned expert in the area of literacy. We are using Language Live at the middle and high schools because it is specific to the needs of adolescents struggling to read. Language Live, like Voyager Passport, features a blended or hybrid instructional approach. The online component focuses on word training, and it fills gaps that students missed in earlier grades. So for our middle and high school students, it works on phonics, it works on spelling, using words in context, fluency. The beauty of the online component is that it's personalized, it's self-paced, and it includes social media and other elements designed to enhance student motivation and encourage self-directed learning. Students create an avatar and profile which allows them to extend their personalities online, which you can see here on the largest of the three screens in the picture. The online component, component excuse me, includes a personalized dashboard where students can see their progress as well as access consistent interactive lessons tailored to meet their needs. This allows them to practice privately and independently, which is majorly important for secondary students who are struggling with reading who tend to be self-conscious about their abilities. Language Live takes what the research tells us about feedback and embeds it in their platform by creating a way for feedback to be provided in a personalized way. Feedback is immediate, it's specific, just for that child. The feedback offers details for improvement and positive feedback, and this increases the student's sense of competence and optimism. optimism. There's also a teacher-led component that focuses on text training. This part is carried out face-to-face -face in small groups and builds on students' foundational skills. The teacher-led instruction helps students advance with better vocabulary, grammar, and comprehension because it utilizes authentic literature that has an intrinsic appeal to adolescent readers. There's also extensive reading, writing practice. The data elements include benchmark assessments with the initial assessment determined place in the, determining placement in the program. All of the assessments are administered online, they are scored online three times a year, and they determine student growth throughout the year in the areas of spelling, fluency, and comprehension. There are also daily ongoing assessments which are extremely beneficial for the teacher to intervene and provide real-time feedback and reteaching. Growth in Language Lab is measured in lexiles, which essentially indicate a student's overall ability to read and comprehend. This data outlines the progress made with the program during the first full year of implementation, which was during 2015-16. Data for the, this current year is not yet available. And as you can see from the chart, all students made progress. At the middle school level, 42% a significant growth as measured by achieving 90 plus lexiles, moderate growth, 37%, which is measured by 50 to 89, growing 50 to 89 lexiles, and some growth, students grew anywhere from 1 to 49 lexiles, 30% at the middle school level. During the 15-16 school year, this program was used with 111 middle schoolers. It was also used with 93 high school students, and 39% of them 
show significant growth, 36% show moderate growth, and 25% show some growth. In terms of the delivery of instruction, Language Live is scheduled as a class for students at the secondary level. It is not a replacement from their typical English class, except in cases where the student may be placed in a self-contained setting, and their special education teacher utilizes it as his or her core instruction, which several do. Services are delivered either daily or every other day, depending on the needs dictated per the student's IEP, as well as other factors that impact the structure of their instructional day. In this last video, you will hear from Ms. Sarah Copeland and one of her students from Warhill High School about the impact at Language Live for them. Um, Language Live has impacted me because it's allowed me to differentiate my learning and differentiate the different learners that I teach within my classroom. Um, in a cross-category se setting, I have a varying degree of learning abilities and learning styles and Language Live allows students that prefer teacher-led instruction and also students that prefer to have online instruction. Seeing them grow through the Language Live program has absolutely been awesome. Um, I have had a couple of students that have worked their way out into English 9, which is the ultimate goal, um, is completing the program and scoring high enough to be able to go on grade level English and grade level learning and being able to um, achieve that goal is awesome to see. And I've had students that you know are much lower in a lower setting that have increased their scores over 100 lexiles. So that, I mean, is equally as rewarding as it is to have students be on grade level. It helps me a lot, actually, because when I was like in first in English 9, I was like failing, didn't know how to read that well. My grammar was terrible. I used to say the. Like the, and then when I was in Language Live, I came and now I'm back in the English sign. I'm passing. It was a solid A. Frederick Douglass said it best. He said, Once you learn to read, you will become forever free. You've heard the voices from the field who are directly involved with these three programs on a daily basis with our students. The gains made in the area of reading has been nothing short of liberating for their own testimonies. Not only do our special education teachers feel empowered in their capacity to be true instructional change agents, the students feel a sense of accomplishment when they are able to start cracking that code again of reading and then all they want to do as the teachers have shared, is read. That's the most powerful of all. So I thank you for your time this evening and welcome any questions that you may have.